Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start off with a session on uh, NFC by Don Coleman. Go over to him. So, uh, hi, thanks for uh, coming out. I'm going to talk today about near field communication and Apache Cordova. And uh, I'm not going to go too much into the basics of Cordova, but if you, um, as long as you understand JavaScript, you'll be able to follow along, and there's enough other stuff to get you up to date on. Uh, on Cordova. I will talk about the background of near-field communication on the assumption that it's kind of a niche technology and people don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of it. And uh, I will have time at the end for questions. So we'll go from there. So for this, in order to support uh, near-field communication with Cordova, it's not part of the core platform, but I've written a plugin to uh, do that. So that will allow you to have access to the JavaScript API, excuse me, access to the near-field communication APIs using JavaScript. So this plugin was originally written for Android back uh, before PhoneGap 1.0. And then uh, a little bit after that, we added BlackBerry 7. And uh, BlackBerry 7 is lo no longer supported from the main branch of the plugin, but uh, there's some older branches that support it. And that's mostly because BlackBerry 7 support has been dropped from Cordova also. You need to use 2.9 for that. So uh, it does support BlackBerry 10, and it does support uh, Windows 8 also. There's varying levels of support there. In general, uh, Android has the best support natively for near-field communication, so that kind of comes across in the plugin. So first off, what is NFC? NFC is near-field communication, or short-range wireless technology. It's a subset of RFID, or radio frequency ID. Radio frequency ID typically works, um, sometimes it's on the same frequency, sometimes it's on different frequencies, but you usually have a bigger reader and you're gonna read things from far away. Um, like in warehousing and stuff like that, they'll be reading the IDs off of a bunch of containers all at once. So it's always reading, mostly just reading IDs. Near field communication, on the other hand, you're gonna have a tag and it's gonna be short range. It's gonna be four to 20 centimeters, but typically you just touch, you know, it's contact less, but typically touch the phone right against something. And we're not just reading IDs. You can read IDs off the tags. They all have pseudo unique codes. Um, but we're going to use it to write data, store data on the tags and to read data off the tags. And I think that's where it's a lot more powerful. So what kind of things can you do with NFC? You can do mobile payments if you have Google Wallet on your phone. And that works great as long as the merchant has that. You can share data between phones. You can send links, pictures, things like that. You can pair with a Bluetooth device. There's some uh, Belkin Bluetooth speakers, and they actually come with NFC in them. So you hold your phone on there. It uses NFC to set up the Bluetooth connection, so then you can stream music over the speakers. Uh, some mass transit cards in the UK and in Boston use NFC. And uh, there's smart posters. You used to see them in the airports. I don't know if anyone's ever seen them, where you can hold your phone up and something happens. You feel just about as dorky as trying to take a picture of a QR code. So most people, I don't think, use them. Um, and then out of all these things, mobile payments isn't something we can do uh, very easily because there's a lot of uh, bureaucracy and stuff around there. So um, Google Wallet used to use the secure element, which is a part of the NFC that we don't have access to. They recently just changed it that so that there's, um, it can emulate apps and stuff, but that's all a whole new area. The plugin doesn't support that, but I had a couple of people ask me about it last week, so I may be looking into it. So the first thing you need when you're doing NFC is you need devices. We're gonna be talking about phones today, so you need Android, uh, Windows 8, or BlackBerry 10. Uh, there's also NFC readers that will plug into your computer, work via USB. There's NFC readers that plug into Arduino. There's a whole bunch of stuff like that. And then you need some tags. So tags come in all shapes and sizes. Um, what's in a tag is there's a really tiny chip, and then there's a big antenna. Some of them that are flipped over, you can see the rings from the antenna. So when you hold your ta a tag up to your phone, your phone is sending out a signal, and then that's powering through the antenna, actually powers the chip in there, and then the data can go back and forth. I'm sure some radio engineers are uh, offended by that description, but it's good enough for now. So the thing to think about for tags is they're very tiny. They hold bytes of data. That's bytes. So this tag here holds 512 bytes before it's formatted. You lose uh, about a third of that once you format it. There's other tags that hold 39 bytes once they're formatted. So you, know, you can easily overflow what's on a tag. 
Um, in general, it's not a problem because we're going to be storing small amounts of data, but it's not like you're going to be writing a picture to there or. Uh, So there's different tag types. There's an NFC forum, which is an organization which comes up with the specs for all this stuff, and they define four tag types. Each of those four tag types has different properties. Um, the tags existed before the tag types, so they kind of reverse engineered that into a spec. But they all have different features that we don't really care about for this, um, for this particular conversation. There is one thing you need to know about. There's a tag called MyFair Classic, which is a very popular NFC tag. And uh, it used to work with almost every device. It's not an official NFC forum tag, but it acts like one. And so any of the older phones it works great with. It works great with the Arduino readers and other things. But if you have a newer phone, um, like the Nexus 5, the Galaxy S4, they switch from the NXP chipset to the Broadcom chipset, and the Broadcom chipset does not support those. So you go to read them, and you'll either only get the ID back or you get an error. This tag isn't supported. Um, so. Uh, a lot of these, just playing cards and stuff that I have, they're my fair classic tags, so I'll be using an older phone for that. Some of these newer tags are official NFC forum tags. Uh, when you're using the plugin, as long as your phone supports it, there's really no difference. There's a lot of common properties. Each of the tags has a uh, unique ID. Uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed to be unique. If you read across the different tag manufacturers, they'll tell you how likely it is to be unique. There's a type, like a my fair classic, my fair ultralight. The technology is, um, there's like NFC A, NFC B, we don't, we're not as worried about that. Capacity, how much data can we put on there? Is it read only? Because sometimes we can write data to it and we can make a tag read only so people aren't going to mess with it. And then is it lockable? Some of the tag types support locking and making them read only, other ones don't. So there's all these differences, but there's one thing, the NFC forum people came up with something called NDEF, which is basically a way you can format tags, a way you can write data on the tags, and it's readable across all types of tags. The base unit in NDEF is an NDEF message, and it's mostly just an array of NDEF records. It has to be, a message has to contain at least one record. And so NDEF record is a building blocks that goes into these messages. Four things on an NDEF record. There's a TNF, type name format, a type, a payload, and a record ID. Um, we can pretty much ignore record ID because I've never seen people using them, at least in the stuff I've been doing. So let's talk about some of the other parts. The payload's the important part. That's where we store the data we care about. If I want to write hello world and put it on a tag, it gets stored as binary data in the payload. The other parts of it, the type name format, the spec defines like six types. And so that basically the type name format is uh, metadata that tells us how to interpret the type. Um, and there's some constants for that. And then the type is metadata that tells us how to interpret the payload. So I think if we look at some examples, it'll be a little easier to tell here. So if I wanted to write hello world onto a tag, it would be a TNF of well known or type one, or TNF of one, and there's constants for those. The type is T, and for well known, tags, there's a spec that defines all this. And then for the payload, the spec tells us that we need to have the text prefaced by a language code, and then the very beginning thing is just tells us how many bytes the language code is. So we have two plus en plus hello world. If we want to store a URI, there's a well-known type of u, and since tags don't have a lot of information, they made a bunch of prefixes. So http colon slash slash gets substituted with a three. There's another one, HTTP colon, P colon slash slash www, I think is a one. So basically we can shorten those tags and store less data in the payload. If we want to put our own data, we can use a my media tag. So we can set the type of my media, which is two or three. And then the, in the type field, we actually put the MIME type in there. We say, hey, this application JSON. And then we would just write our JSON into the, pay, into the payload. So in the NFC plugin, you don't want to have to worry about a lot of those rules, and I got really sick of building these generic records. So I put some uh, helper methods in. So we can create a text record with NDEF text record, URI record with URI record. And so there's these helpers to encode data onto a tag, and then the inverse where there's going to be helpers to take the data off of a tag and get it back into something you can use. So we'll look at some of those as we go through this. So just as a quick review, there's NDEF messages contain one or more NDEF records. 
and the NDEF record has a payload and it has metadata that tells us how to interpret that payload. So now let's look at the Cordova NFC plugin. So it's made to work with um, the command line interface. So if we we're going to create a new project, we'd give it the folder, the ID, and then the name of the uh, project. And then we can do platform add Android, and then we plug in add, and the ID is com chariot solutions NFC plugin. So you can get that from the plugin repository, or you could actually put the GitHub URL in there and pull it right from GitHub, which sometimes if you need something that I'm working on that hasn't been released, that's a good way to get it. So in our application, uh, we're going to be in our index.js file, and when the on-device ready fires, we know that Cordova is spun up and we're ready to start doing something. So if we want to uh, listen and read tags, we need to add a listener. So the listener takes three parameters. It takes an event listener, success callback, and a failure callback. And this is where it's a little bit different from some other Cordova APIs. There's a lot of APIs that will take just a success and a failure callback, and we have this first thing where we're asking for an event listener. This is kind of a legacy thing, and it's either I didn't know what I was doing when I wrote the plugin, or Cordova uh, 096 didn't support it. I don't know which it is, but it's kind of been around in there. So when you add the listener, I actually create a JavaScript listener, and then I call the native code. And then when the native code does its thing, it fires a JavaScript event. So we're actually just catching a JavaScript event in our listener. Um, and the success callback only means that the listener was successfully added. The failure callback means that the listener was failed to add. So if we look at, if in our application we wanted to handle an NFC event, we'd add it uh, on NFC, and then we'd get this JavaScript event. So the first thing we do is we pull the tag out of the event. And then we're just going to look at the message. So we want to pull the message out of the tag, and we can stringify that and just alert that up. So it's a very, very simple app. So I have, a, <clears throat> I have some sample apps here that we can look at. And uh, so this is basically what I did here is I took the, uh, the, the Hello World app, and I pretty much just used it, and I put some different text in there so we know what we're doing. So the, this is the same. The uh, magic happens in the index that it, excuse me, index.js file, and I actually opened the wrong project. Okay, so in here, this is going to be our whole app. We initialize the app, we bind the events, that's stuff that just happens. In on device ready, we add that event listener. I'm adding my handler and I'm ignoring the success and failure callbacks. And then I have on NFC where we're going to get the event. So if we do Cordova run, and I'm mirroring my phone here, let's take just a second and launch. Now there will be a little bit of lag between what happens on the phone and what happens up there. So if we take this tag and hold this on here, we get an alert box with a bunch of junk in it. So what we're doing here is we just stringified the raw JSON that was coming back. And uh, payload on a tag can be anything. So that's being stored as bytes. So it's just an array of integers in this case. Um, there's also the ID, which is blank, the type, and the um, type and the TNF. The TNF is uh, what we can treat as an integer in JavaScript. And the type is also a uh, byte array, which is kind of unfortunate. If I was doing this again, I would make type a string. You learn as you go on here. So in order to do something useful this, with this, we need to decode this a little more because that's not going to do us any good. So in order to decode, we need to be a little bit smart about what's on there. There's a utility method, because all those things are byte arrays and comparing us with pain. There's a util called isType, and you pass in the NDEF record, you pass in the TNF you care about, and the type you care about. So we could do something like this. And this, I had to shorten the code a little bit. There's some NDEFs in front of things. But basically we say, hey, is, is this record a well-known type and a URI? If so, we decode it as a URI. If it's text, we decode it as text and we could do a bunch of stuff. The key is most of the time we're not going to be writing a generic app that does anything with NFC. We're going to be looking for and processing a particular type of tags. 
so the logic for this won't be too bad, but we can reject tags that we don't care about or if people are trying to do the wrong thing. <clears throat> so we have another example. Um, and this one, it's the same as before, but it's slightly longer. We just have that logic in there where we decode this. And so this, if we get a URI or text, we can display the value nicely. Anything else, we just stringify it. So we'll deploy that again. I should be making this window smaller. So now, when we have this here, if we try to read this same tag again, oh, we'll actually get something useful. This one says hello world because it was a text message. This one here has a URI on it. Oh, just got to hit hello. So it'll read the URI. And now this tag here has a uh, Android application record on it. So since we're not handling that, it'll once again just print the bytes out. So the takeaway on this is you need to register the listener, and then in the listener you need to handle the event, introspect the data that's on the tag, and then you can decode it. So next we want to write data on the tag. So when you're doing Android, one thing you need to remember, you have, when you call write, a tag has to be within the field. So the easiest way to do that is to do within the event handler, call write from within there. You don't have to look at what's on the event or anything, but just know that you should process the event. If you try to do it without that, you get an error. If you're dealing with Windows Phone, you can write a tag anytime you want. So it's a little platform difference there. So to write, a t to write data, we need to make a message. Like I said before, an endf message is just an array of endf records. So we're going to just define an array right there with JSON. And then within there, I'll use a helper method. And I'll create the URI record that says Cordova. And then we call the write with a success and a failure. So uh, you do actually care about success and failure here. Success will get called after it's written. So in here, we're doing that same thing that I showed right there. Uh, I do have a div that'll say, hey, we successfully wrote this. Okay, so uh, this tag said apache.org on it before. So if we write, hold this on here, then we get a little text down there. It's too small to read. Sorry about that. It says it wrote the data to the tag. So now how do we verify that we wrote the data? Um, so we have an NFC reader app, which is one of the sample apps that uses PhoneGap NFC. This is on my GitHub. Uh, my username is Don on GitHub. You can just search for it. It's there. Um, so if we hold this here, we can read the tag. It tells us some of the meta information about the tag, and it tells us it's a well-known record, type U, Cordova.io, which is kind of interesting. But what's better is with Android, Android is really set up that if you put a tag in front of it, so we're not running any application, and I hold the tag here, it's going to launch the browser. It's going to read the tag. It goes to Cordova.io, which redirects to Cordova.apache.org. And so we're able to control the phone without any app there. Later, we'll look at we, if we wanted to intercept that with our app, we could do that. Um, so by default, there'll be apps that handle tags. If two, t two apps want to handle the same tag, the user will be prompted. Hey, do you want to open it with A or B? You can write more than one record. So if you want to write multiple records, you can just keep stacking these up uh, until you exceed the limit of the tag. OK, so we show reading the tag. So here's where it gets a little more interesting. If you don't want to deal with tags, we can still send NDEF messages back and forth between devices. So this is very similar to how we wrote. We create the message the same way. But instead of calling NDEF uh, share, 
or excuse me, instead of calling endf write, we call endf share. Now, whereas with write, we had to wait for a tag was in the field, we can call share anytime we want. So we can call share, and it'll share that tag. Whenever a phone is in range, it'll send that message. And it'll keep sending that message forever until we call unshare. So this code gets even simpler because we can do everything in on device ready. We can basically just say, when the app starts up, create this tag and share it. And then the success callback of on share, once the peer reads the message, we get the success callback. So you can tell when someone's read it and maybe do something interesting. In here, we're just going to update the status. So in order to do this, this is going to be a little tougher to see since my app will only let me mirror one phone at a time. But I basically hold it up to this other phone, and you'll see we get this touch to beam. So I touch the first phone, and it sends it over, and then that opens up the Cordova.io web page here on my phone. That's because I didn't have any app open, so it opened the browser by default. If I was running the NFC reader on here like we looked at before, and I hold this up, send it over, the tag shows up in here. So sometimes when an application is running in the foreground, it's called foreground dispatching, it gets first crack at grabbing that tag and doing something with it. So my NFC reader app, when it's in the foreground, tries to read every tag there is. So that's why it reads it. If a, if a different app was open, that app could ignore it, and then the browser would open because the operating system will then go, hey, who can handle this event coming in? So the other neat thing is that that worked from Android to Android quite well. But I also have a BlackBerry device. So if you hold it up, you can do the same thing. And if my network's working, it opened the browser here and it's loading uh, Cordova IO. So it'll go between, um, sharing works pretty well across uh, all devices. We're gonna look at something else which uh, doesn't work as consistently across devices. So sharing is pretty cool. It lets us send things like URIs, text messages. We can create custom messages that we want to send back and forth. So if you had an app um, that you wanted to do something, you could make that work together. The only downside, which I really find to this, uh, when, when this first came out with Android 3.2, you didn't have to do that tap to send. You could just hold devices together and it would send messages. So we had a rock, paper, scissors game where you could do that. You could hold the phone up and each person would choose. It worked pretty well. But now with that push to beam, you'd have to hit a button, then you do touch to beam, and it just got too clunky and it didn't work that well. Um, so I understand why they added that to the system, but it makes the interaction a little bit tougher. Um, other platforms don't necessarily make you do that sort of thing before you send a message. So the other thing we can do is something called NFC handover. And handover is kind of like peer-to-peer, -peer, but it starts with NFC, and then it finishes with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So this works much better for bigger, bigger things. If I want to send a photo from one phone to the other, technically I could write that to an NDEF message because an NDEF message can be really long. But the transfer rate's really slow. So you'd have to be holding the phone together for, I don't know, a minute and a half, which seems like forever when you're trying to do that. And if you move the phone out of the way a little bit, you lose the connection and it stops. So the handover here is a concept which, will, which applies across all NFC. This implementation is heavily influenced by the Android API. So we're going to have a demo here where I'll take a picture on one phone, and we're going to use the Cordova API to do that. So I'll put a button, I'll wire an event to take a picture. When we take the picture, uh, we get a URI of the picture back. In order for handover to work, we need a file URI or a content URI, which are both going to be files that are essentially locally to the device. And so to handover, we can give it one URI or an array of URIs and a success and a failure callback. And then uh, internally, Android will take those URIs. It'll do a few messages back and forth. It'll figure out how it works. It usually goes to Bluetooth and then streams these files over Bluetooth.
So this app is a little bit longer than our other apps we've had before, but it's still, uh, it's, it's still pretty short. So we have the boilerplate at the beginning. Uh, we have the camera where I add an event listener. When you push that, we get the picture. And then in on-camera success, I create a couple callbacks so we can see what's going on. And then we send the picture across. So this is where, hopefully this will work well. Now this is one of these things that occasionally I've been able to make it work across other platforms. I can't consistently get it to work from, um, uh, from Android to BlackBerry. I think Windows was a little better at one point, but then they had an update and it doesn't work at all. Okay, so we have my awesome PhoneGap app and I'm gonna take a picture of y'all. So smile. And then we'll just say that's good. And there's a little bit of lag here. Okay, so now it says tap to send to another phone. And part of this you're gonna have to trust me a little bit because you can't see my phone as well. But So if I hold my phone up, we get tap to send exactly like before. And so I beam that over. At the top of the screen it says beaming. Now on my phone it says incoming beam. And then it says beam complete on the top. So if I touch beam complete, Oh, okay, so it said, do you want to open with the gallery? And I say yes, and it opens up and it shows, hopefully, yeah, a picture of you guys there. Um, so that's really powerful stuff for a very tiny amount of code. And really what we're doing is we're just leveraging all that stuff built into Android. Um, so I think that this is one of those areas where you can do some cool things that weren't necessarily uh, what you think of with NFC tags. So the other thing you can do is... Uh, when I scan a tag, maybe I want my app to launch. So as long as the phone is unlocked, it will scan tags and can do stuff. So like I showed before, we scanned a tag with a uh, URI on it, and it opened the browser. If we want to scan a tag with a text message on it, we could do that and have it open our app. Um, so basically what we have to do is we need to go into the Android manifest, and we need, to we need to define an intent filter. And here's where it gets a little bit weird. A text message is a well-known type but we specify a MIME type filter for that. Um, but we can do that and whenever we scanned a plain text message, it would open our app. You can also do URI patterns. So if you wanted it to open when it scanned a URI of um, just my company, it could open my app and it could ignore all other URIs and those would go to the browser. Um, so it's a very powerful feature. You can do cool things with that. And that's where a lot of the power of NFC can come in, because if you're somewhere where there's a tag, you can do something, boom, scan it. Uh, working with some people that are trying to do stuff in, uh, for uh, healthcare professionals going to visit patients, and if the patient has a tag, they can quickly scan the tag, and it's going to pull up all the information in the app about that patient so they know what's going on. So to recap, uh, we can read a message from a tagger up here. Um, that code that we wrote before where we were... Um, reading the message off the tag and decoding it. The app doesn't necessarily care when it's listening for messages if the message came from a phone or a tag. There's no difference to that. In fact, you, you'd have to look at the tag meta information and tell. Um, for the most part, you don't care. You're getting a message coming in. You need to decode the payload coming uh, by using the TNF and the type because um, it's binary data, so you use those hints to know what to do with the data. We can write a message to a tag. A message is just an array of records. And we could share a message with a peer. And then we can use handover for large messages. And then lastly, we can launch an app when scanning a tag. So a little bit of a detour here. Um, if you do want to do anything with NDEF, uh, I have the PhoneGap plugin. I do have a couple other NDEF libraries, an NDEF library for Node.js and an NDEF library for Arduino if you want, ever want to try to make all this stuff work together um, with PhoneGap. If you need to learn more about the details, there's a whole bunch of details that I just kind of glossed over. Or if you just have Insomnia, you can read the technical specs. There's a lot of information in there. Um, you do have to, they have like a license, uh, you have to click through, you got to put your name and your email address or something, but they'll give you all the specs there. There's a lot of good information. Um, hang on, I'll come back to that in a second. And uh, I also wrote a book on NFC where we use uh, 
phone gap, because that's the term most people know there, but we actually use all the Cordova, um, Cordova libraries, and we use uh, across phones, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, computers, stuff like that, a lot of good stuff. We really try to have practical projects and do a lot of things with JavaScript rather than low-level things. So if you want to check that out, I have uh, coupons too from O'Reilly if you care. The um, Cordova is having a hackathon tomorrow, so uh, I'll be there. There'll be a bunch of Cordova committers there, and if you want to come, there's a couple goals. I heard you can win a couple uh, tablets, which should be cool, or if you just want to hack on NFC or Bluetooth or write plugins or anything, I'll be there, uh, happy to work with you guys, work through problems you have. And uh, that's it. I'll open it up for questions. These slides are online. And um, all that source code that I was using is not online yet, but it will be online this afternoon. The, re the way I've been able to make it fail is if you give it a, fi a file or a content URI with spaces in it, at least on 4.2, it would fail. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why it would fail there. Other than that, it works pretty awesome. There may be some calls or hints you can give it. For the most part, I've seen it go to Bluetooth. I think that's because the devices I was using were Bluetooth. So as long as Bluetooth is available, it always works. I think it will use Wi-Fi direct, but a lot of that is kind of you're delegating to Android and letting Android try to figure it out. You don't, you don't need to pair the device to be Android. No, it w if you're going from uh, like Android to Windows Phone, I did have to pair them. If you're going from Android to Android, you shouldn't have to do that. It should automatically do all that. It'd be interesting to actually try that with my sample and uh, your phone to see if we could actually make that work. Some RFID works on the same 13 point something megahertz frequency. Um, so the short answer is, if you're not doing phones, I think you can do it with uh, some of the Arduino based hardware. We'll do RFID and uh, NFC with the same hardware. But other than that, I don't know. The other, uh, the, the other RFID readers we have are these huge antennas and they're completely incompatible because they're working at a different frequency. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. I'll be hanging out around here if you've got any questions.